What's going on YouTube? Welcome to the video. Going to be starting a new series because I am a pharmacy student on rotations at uh, Rutgers University. Six year pharmacy student, so I'm currently rotating at eight different rotation sites, five weeks each, and doing pharmacist uh, things. So my first one, I'm at Monmouth Medical Center. I am working at the mental health clinic, uh, the Polak Clinic, and I'll be showing you that location in a little bit. But I want to show you kind of like what a day is for uh, like a rotation student and fitting in fitness and um, tracking macros and everything because in the real world it's pretty tough to fit all that in. I was spoiled, I was at college, so I had a lot of free time on my hands. I'm gonna show you uh, the discipline needed to make it work. Uh, me personally, I'm just a morning lifter, so you're gonna see uh, my crazy wake up times, but that's just what works for me and it doesn't make me any better than anyone else who works, at, works out at 5 p.m. Uh, you do whatever works for your schedule, whatever you feel you're most effective with. So, I live an hour away from um, Monmouth Medical Center. It's uh, around Long Branch. So what me and Nicole did is we got an Airbnb for uh, about those like four and a half weeks, about five weeks. Um, and this is only like 20 minutes from our rotation site. Also joined a 24 hour gym. And that was the plan. So we're staying in this beautiful room, which I'll be showing you shortly, uh, for four and a half weeks. So let me give you a little tour of that. Please excuse the mess. I just got back from work and there's my bag. Here's the bed and everything. Got a chair, another chair, nice desk, and then a big TV for us to put some YouTube videos on, connecting that to the laptop. Um, going to be getting to this in a minute because I've just been using these to, oop, making a mess, using uh, big cartons of ice cream to hit my calories because they are a little higher right now. We got a lot of like, Greek yogurt and stuff. We actually went to a place called Amy's Omelette House. So that's what that doggy bag is. We got some egg whites that we didn't get to. Some soda. Yeah, so that's the room. I guess we got a little closet for clothes and stuff and fancy stuff. So I'm going to just show you the rest of the house. Me and Nicole, we pretty much just use like the kitchen when we need to. Um, actually doing some laundry right now. Uh, so domesticated. And then just got like the front door and stuff. So I'll just show you, I guess, the quick stuff that we actually use. Because again, this isn't our home. We're just staying uh, in this room. Here's the bathroom. I hit this in the middle of the night one night, turning that corner. Nice little room here. Hello. Here's one of our lovely hosts. <laughs> I'm just showing the Airbnb. I have a YouTube oh. channel, so just showing the place. Oh, okay. Just like, hi, nice. All right, and here is the kitchen, which we come occasionally to. Microwave and stuff is useful in the morning. And yeah, here's that. There's the kitchen. <laughs> it looks fun. My room is far worse. So that is the place that me and Nicole are staying at. Beautiful house. We're very fortunate to get this. This is in um, the Atlantic Highlands. It's just like 20 minutes from Long Branch about where I'm uh, going to be working and lifting. Um, so, yeah, really lucky about that. I think it was like $50 or $70. Probably put that right here. And I guess when I move out, so no one comes in. When we move out, I'll probably like list the address and stuff so you can like pick this place up if you want to like visit because we're right across the, across the water from uh, New York City, which is really cool. You can take a ferry into there if we ever want. But yeah, back to um, starting this series because I want to be able to give um, also other pharmacy students a little experience of what rotations are. Uh, pharmacy rotations are pretty much I'm just working a nine to five, like most people, except I'm paying tuition to do it and learning on the job. So I'm being taught by a preceptor. And right now, I really like my location. My preceptor is pretty awesome. There's always going to be work to be done, but I have, she's giving us enough time to get the work that we need to get done done so very happy about that that's gonna do it pretty much for this part of the video I'm gonna be showing you like my daily life at this first cycle one rotation I'll be showing you when I get up when I train kind of maybe a little uh, taste of what I do so I'll see you in the morning good morning YouTube it is a little after 2 a.m. You can see that, and we're gonna be getting this day started. I'm gonna take you through a little bit of my morning routine. Uh, gonna brush my teeth and get some stuff ready. And uh, Nicole's that lump over there. Good morning. On the back. 
All right, now it's about like 2.30. So here's what I'm doing now is I'm doing a little bit of emails, eating some oatmeal, drinking some coffee, watching um, an Omar Esau video about uh, using fake weights, which I'm of course uh, guilty of. Um, and yeah, just doing this until probably around like 3.30, then gonna head over to the gym. Uh, yeah, the got pretty bad. We're gonna head over to the gym, get a workout in. Got early morning deadlifts today. Usually doesn't turn out well, but uh, yeah, gonna go over there, and that gives me about like three, um, about three hours to train because my uh, gym and my the medical center are about like, ten minutes apart. Uh, that's all like twenty minutes from here, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much my morning routine. I'll see you at the gym. All this praise on me for all this crazy yeah. shit I was doing would have been nonsensical. Alright, so it's about 3.45 and just got over to the gym. We are at Elite Fitness Club, if you can see that. Somebody's already in there. That's my guy Tom, who actually, he comes in and trains at like 2 or 3 in the morning, which is nuts. Um, so yeah, it's about 3.45, about to get in there and get some deadlifts done. Uh, also, just like a tip, um, and, and this is just my opinion, but I started listening to a lot more podcasts on my way to work. It's only like a 20 minute drive. Um, or over to the gym, like it's 20 minutes over here, and then it's like another 10 minute drive. But I started listening to podcasts because I feel like I learn a lot more listening to people like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, listening to that podcast with Mark Bell, shout out to you guys, great up. Uh, uh, podcast is the Powercast. But I do just learn from other people's experiences, and it helps me grow instead of listening to the same old music day in and day out. Because once, once you hear the same, like probably like five or six songs that cycle on the radio, then you've heard it all, and then. You're just listening to those over and over. So I just, I transitioned over to listen to podcasts. I feel like it helps me grow as a person. I learn more and that's just a little more entertaining to me, hear people's stories. And uh, also I like Lane Norton's uh, podcast as well. I think it's Physique Science Radio. Just hear about a lot of um, scientists, like PhDs and their, their journey throughout school and everything. Um, and then also their specialties and just learn. So that's my opinion. If you haven't tried podcasts out, I'd say give them a try. You may get more out of it and you may enjoy that more than just listening to the same radio, the same songs on the radio every day. Um, also may look into audiobooks soon to um, try those, but I think audiobooks are like eight hours usually. So we'll see if I start that on Amazon and I'll let you guys know how that is. But let's go to the gym. Uh, I was sipping down some carbon prep. Gonna get in, try to do some early morning deadlifts, show you what the gym looks like, and uh, let's get in there. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, good morning, how we doing? I'm good, how are you? Good man, real good. Another early morning. Love it. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. What time do you get in here? Uh, it's, it's morning, 2.30. 2.30? All right, so warming up for deadlifts right now. There's 3.15. But the reason I joined this gym is it's 24 hours a day. Uh, we get a key to come in whenever. Well, let me get that lighting. So we can just like come in whenever. Um, Tom was already here, so the door was open. But now he just finished up. It's like 4:15, so I have the gym to myself, which is pretty cool. Um, so we're gonna be doing some deadlifts. My other half is still asleep because um, Nicole just started 10-hour days yesterday, so she got back at like 6:15, and bedtime is like 7. So uh, I can understand her wanting to sleep in a little bit. Um, probably just take a rest day for today while she acclimates to like the 10 hour days. Um, so my strength like when implementing these like 2 a.m. wake ups and like 4 a.m. workouts. At first I did take like uh, a hit in strength but now now that I'm more acclimated I haven't seen too many detriments to my strength. Um, usually when you change like at the time period that you work out at your body's maybe not accustomed to that especially if you're moving towards like closer to when like you wake up because then your body heat isn't up, your joints aren't like ready to move and everything. So sometimes giving yourself a two hour wake up period is going to be beneficial than like getting up out of bed and going because then everything's cold and you haven't moved around and gotten things lubricated, got blood moving. So that's why I like getting up like two hours before I start working out, give myself a little time to wake up, especially mentally it helps me. So we're going to be lifting here. Uh, also this gym was like 50 bucks for like the month, which is very reasonable in my opinion, especially because it's going to satisfy my needs. Um, so yeah, let me show you how these deadlifts go. Dance party for one going on, got the shuffle mix on, and so I guess, I guess that's what shuffling is. I think it's a really cool dance though, but uh, it's a good upbeat music to wake me up at 4 in the morning. The deadlifts are moving nice, I'll show you the top set.
And then they're like, well, we need you to have you involved now. You were the genesis of this. We need you back involved. And I'm glad that they asked me to get back involved. So All right, it's a little before 7.30. Just got into the clinic, about to head in. Um, we work, our days are 7.30 to 3.30. So that's what we're doing today. I just like bring all my stuff on hangers and toss them in the car. So just gonna throw all this stuff on and then head in. I'll show you, uh, I guess, what we're gonna be doing today. Fancy. There's the dining room. Library is in here. You'll see that for the interview. And here is the office where we are going to be completing a lot of our um, projects. And this is where we spend the majority of the day. Where we do projects and get called out with the preceptor whenever we have a, a patient to come see or medications to pack. All right, so here I am in front of the street sign for the Pollock Clinic, which I'm working at. I uh, just got let go for the day. It's about, um, I think it's only like 12. Usually we would be taking lunch around this time and going across. I didn't even see this. All right, so here's what a more typical lunch is like. We are over across the street. Here's some more of the other students. Say hey, guys. Say hello. And so this is what normal lunch is, and this is what the, the lunchroom looks like at the hospital. <laughs> Across the street, right over here, to Monmouth Medical Center. That is the big, that's the big hospital right there. There's the sign. So that's the big hospital. We usually will be having our lunch there, but uh, today we have a journal club due, which sounds all fun and stuff, a journal club, but it's actually just uh, reviewing research. We found a research paper, and then uh, there's a template that we fill out, pretty much evaluating the research. Um, and summarizing it and making it digest, like pre-digesting it so we can present it and then go over um, what the implications are and if that can be used in the hospital. So let me show you the building. That's the Pollock Clinic right there. Uh, that's right, who? Right behind me, it's that little building back there. It's right across the street from Monmouth Medical. And so we have a lot more time to work on this journal club. I'm very fortunate. My preceptor is pretty awesome right now and you're gonna to get to meet her. I told her today that I wanted to uh, have her do like a minute just telling what we do at this location uh, just real quick. So I'm gonna put that right here. All right, I'm here with Dr. Karina Patel, who is my preceptor. She's pretty much my teacher, teaching me a bunch of, bunch of things while on rotation. I'm learning a lot, especially from taking lectures and then putting it into practice. So she's helping a lot. She's gonna be telling you with, um, at this location, the Pollock Clinic, the the types of patients we're like dealing with, um, kind of what she does day to day, and then what she has us students do uh, day to day. So without further ado, I'll let her take it away. Sure, hi. So um, some of the things that I do at the clinic here um, would involve counseling patients and interacting with, with a lot of our patients at the clinic. Most of our patients that we see at the clinic do have um, some type of mental health disorder. Um, we do a lot of patient counseling, uh, monitoring our patients, and um, you know a lot of education about adherence and, and medication education. And then what do you, I guess like tell them some of the tasks that you, I guess throw on us students to uh, take care of. Yeah, so the students kind of uh, mimic what I do as a pharmacist. So again, um, under supervision, they will also counsel and interact with patients, um, help out with any monitoring that goes along with the medications. Um, as well as um, education with adherence and medications. Yeah, so the first couple of days we would go along, go to see the one-on-one -on -one interactions. The students would take more of like a watching and learning um, mm -hmm. position, but uh, since then we've been able to take more of the reins and uh, like interact in there and ask some of the questions. So that's been really cool to learn from. And uh, we just finished actually our first journal club presentation, as you saw earlier in the video, and uh, that was nerve-wracking for our students. 
but um, I guess it worked out for us both. So I want to thank Dr. Karina Patel for taking part in the video. It's really, really nice for you guys to see, I guess, what pharmacy students do day to day. Thank you to Dr. Karina Patel for that segment and uh, going over like what we do on a daily basis here. Uh, so typically we would get out like 3.30 and um, I would go back, have some ice cream and stuff. So I'm gonna head back right now because again, it is only like 12 o'clock and I'm gonna bang out the rest of this journal club, show you kind of what that looks like. All right, got back to dress down in my unicorn shirt. Heading home now, I forgot to mention what I usually have for uh, lunch just so it's something easy and quick. I usually get these Costco kind of like Quest Bar like things. Uh, protein bars, they have a lot of fiber and a lot of protein, so eating two of these will hold me over for a while. Uh, as you see, I only have one right now because I got hungry in the early uh, part of the day and I just had the other one. If you want to have a really, really easy meal, probably I would suggest getting these protein bars because they will satiate you, hold you over, and also they're going to save you uh, a lot of calories for later in the day. You can use that on ice cream, uh, like I do, or... But the smart thing to do is also to incorporate a lot of uh, vegetables and stuff later in the day because uh, this doesn't have a lot of micronutrients as your fiber and your protein, but later on you're going to want to get those vegetables in and everything. But if you do have the time to meal prep, that's always a good choice for your lunches. But without further ado, i got to drive home and listen to some more podcasts. When you were still young and marks upon your heart, when the aspirations you had for yourself were still green, all right, so here is the Airbnb from the outside, right there, pretty nice house. And then right across from our place is the parking lot for the beach. So that's the parking lot, and then on the other side of that is the beach. So let me actually, let me, let me show you real quick. Uh, I do that too. <laughs> All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that view. I just got back and it is about like 1230, 1240-ish. Um, so definitely like significantly earlier than I'm usually back, but this isn't a day off. I actually have to do this journal club. So let me show you. So let me show you what this journal club looks like. And you can see all the fun I'm about to have. So they give us a template. And then, so we look at some research. Mine is on memantine uh, as combination therapy, um, and this is to treat um, MDD or major depressive disorder. So that's my study that I am evaluating, and then you pretty much just throw it into this template. I've already gone pretty far into it, but you throw it into this template, and then you write. So before this is done, it's supposed to be about um, in between three and five pages. Right now I'm on six pages, but uh, I'll definitely condense it uh, before I hand it in, which it's two at five. So I need to get moving on this. But that's going to pretty much do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed um, coming along for a day of rotations with me. I want to get this out every cycle, hopefully. Show you kind of how my lifestyle is going to change with every um, new rotation site that I'm going to be at. So this is cycle one in Monmouth uh, Medical Center, uh, Pollock Clinic. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like down below. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.